Hello and welcome to episode number seven of Tradecraft Security Weekly. I am your host, Bo Bullock, and this week I'm going to be talking to you about situational awareness, uh, specifically with a PowerShell tool that I wrote called Host Recon. Now, situational awareness basically boils down to those existential questions in life. Who am I? Where am I? And what is going on around me right now? Um, you know, a lot of different martial arts trainings, uh, various military trainings, self-defense courses, they all teach you about situational awareness because it helps you be more successful in a dangerous situ situation like, like an attack or a fight. Um, so the same thing applies to cybersecurity as well, specifically if you're an attacker or pen tester. Um, having your situational awareness game on will help you be more successful. And the reason is because if you were to just you know blindly start attacking, start you know um, throwing off random attacks, and uh, you didn't actually like learn what the environment is around you, you might miss something very critical that is going to completely destroy your attack. Um, so you know whenever you whenever you get access to a network, let's say you fish somebody for the first time, and you have a brand new shell on a completely unknown environment, uh, you have to learn things about that environment, but prior to actually. Um, you know, proceeding with any further attacks so that you don't get caught. Um, so let's make better informed decisions by doing some so situational awareness first. So some of the common things that I always look for, is specifically right after I get new access to a network, right after I get brand new access to a system, there's a few things. Um, you know, answer those questions that I mentioned a bit ago. So who am I? So just the current user, right? Um, who? What is the user that I'm running as? Um, you know, you get, let's say you, you get a, a web shell on a server, you know, if you're running as, uh, you know, the dub dub data user, you know that that's probably not as privileged as, you know, let's say, you know, let's say they're running the web server as root. Um, but, you know, you never know, they might be running it as root, and that would be a better situation for you to be in um, as an attacker. So, uh, you know, current user, you know, get the domain, if, if it's a domain attached system, uh, that can be very important to understand um, where you are in terms of the network, uh, the host name of the system you're on. Um, the IP and, and, and interface info, like let's say that it's a dual home system, you might you might be able to pivot you know to a completely different network from that one system, um, or let's say that it's you know maybe attached to the wireless, it's a, maybe it's got a wireless interface, you might be able to go grab the 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 PSK cred um, and clear text, uh, you know, and, and then have that you know if you wanted to go do like a physical attack later on or something and, and go do a wireless attack in person. Um, local admins group. So let's you know see if our user that we already have is a local admin of the system. That's important. And then who who obviously is local admin of the system? Are there any open ports on that system currently? Um, meaning like is it running something that we would consider non-standard? Um, maybe a different piece of software that we might be able to exploit later on. Um, are there any established connections to other systems? Uh, you know, knowing where other devices are on the network because a lot of times you know Windows devices are very very talkative to the rest of the network. So um, knowing like where like let's say DNS server is or where the uh, you know DCs are, um, you know based off of just some established connections or, or even who's connected to the system that we're connected to currently is important. Uh, various services that are running might might be useful for for maybe potential privilege, privilege escalation attacks later on. Um, if there are any shares locally, any scheduled tasks you might be able to take advantage of. Uh, security product info is extremely important, right? So knowing what antivirus is on the system, if any, um, knowing if they're using application whitelisting, knowing if there's any sort of behavioral analytics software, DLP software, that kind of stuff. Um, being able to find that information prior to actually doing anything um, else on that system is going to help us be more successful. So we can, you know, take what we know about the security products that are on the system and go and then, you know, write our own malware offline on a different system that we have control over and then bypass those, those particular products um, before we're actually running them on the network that we're attacking. Um, and then domain password policy. You know, in a couple episodes ago, I talked about password spraying, which has, uh, you know, been very successful for us. And, uh, you know, knowing the, the password policy for the domain is important. So uh, I wrote a tool, it's a PowerShell tool called Host Recon that performs a lot of this automatically. Um, it does all those things that I just mentioned previously. Uh, and it doesn't, the, the key thing with this tool, because I, I want it to remain stealthy, right? So, you know, when you get first access to a network, you could just start, you know, typing net users, IP config, net stat, all those different commands. But those are binaries on the system that a, a few different security products actually do detect, and they will trigger alerts on. Um, because, you know, those are t typical things that users, most standard users, aren't going to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So there's a lot, of, a lot of organizations that alert on those types of products, or not products, but those, those tools, because it's not something that your typical employee is going to need to do. So if, if anybody's doing it, it's probably, you know, a, a bad thing. I mean, for the most part, like a, a random user is doing that. They don't need to do that. Um, so uh, to avoid 
triggering and alerts, I, I wrote all those different uh, uh, checks in various like PowerShell and WMI queries um, to avoid actually hitting any of those built-in binaries um, from the disk. Additionally, you know, I, I say a check for common security products. So the way I do that is based purely off of a list of things that I've seen previously. So it's not a definitive list by any means, but um, it does check some of the common services that are running on the system and looks for the names of them and tries to associate those with security products and tells you about it. Um, so, you know, if there's a specific antivirus or specific app, app whitelisting product on there, it will tell you. Um, it can also perform egress filtering checks. Uh, Joff Thayer wrote an excellent port scanning tool that uh, I can perform outbound port scans to, to a server on the internet that has all ports open um, and will allow us to know what's allowed out of the network from that host. Um, that's up on GitHub. So let's go ahead and show a quick demo of that. Um, so I've got a Windows 10 box here. Um, you know, go, go out to GitHub, grab the script. It's just a, a PowerShell script. Um, throw it on the, on the system you're gonna run this on. Um, so in terms of, of how you would run this particular uh, script, you could do it a couple different ways, right? So, you know, I talk about not being noisy, but still it is a PowerShell script, so I do need to run PowerShell in some format. Um, so, you know, like, uh, it is it is possible that you know you're alerting on PowerShell, right? PowerShell.exe is something that would be potentially something that would get caught here. Um, but there are other tools out there that can wrap PowerShell scripts, such as uh, Powerline from Brian Brian Furman, um, that will not use the PowerShell XE at all, um, and will still be able to run uh, PowerShell uh, based commands ba purely because of the, the .NET framework that's that's built on the back end of PowerShell. Um, so let's let's go ahead and just demo this. So uh, it, we have our script here. Let's import module host recon, and then it's as simple as running invoke dash host recon. And it's going to go through all those checks that I mentioned uh, earlier. I'm going to go ahead and scroll up here, and we'll go through each of these real quick. Um, so to start, I mentioned that we've got um, I mentioned that we've got uh, the username right. So let's see. Yeah. Uh, okay, so host name, um, we've got TIE Fighter Win um, of this specific system. Um, we've got the IP address info. Uh, you know, so this would be your typical like IP config kind of command. Um, we've got the current domain the user's a member of, uh, the current user that we're running as. We've got the various uh, local users of this system. So you know, accounts that are local users, not domain users of this system. The local admins group of the system. So we, you know, who who is an admin of this system? Which my current user is not. Um, the active network connections to to various systems, uh, to various uh, other other servers and, and whatnot. Um, let's see. We've got active TCP listeners. Uh, so this is your 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 net stat, right? So knowing knowing what we have open currently on this system. Um, DNS cache. So uh, knowing. This this is actually useful for a couple different reasons because you know like for example like I've got my my DC here Death Star DC and it shows us you know the IP here right like we know we there's DNS cache for that host on this system that says okay I know where the DC is now um, but that you know that could be useful for a number of different uh, situations as well um, the share listing so we get you know the different shares that are currently um, open on this system. Uh, list of scheduled tasks, which currently this host does not have any scheduled tasks. Proxy info, so if there was a web proxy enabled, like if I had this host uh, proxying all web traffic through a host, or through a web proxy, uh, that would likely show up here. Um, checking if AV is installed. So, uh, you know, it's, it's able to see that Windows Defender is currently the AV of choice of this system. The local firewall status, so what the firewall is enabled for this host. Uh, checking for laps, so local, local admin password solution is a... Uh, is, is something where you can randomize the local administrator password for, for, for systems. And in order to do that, a lot of times you have to deploy a DLL, a specific DLL to those systems. And so, I mean, it's not a definitive check by any means um, because you know it's possible like you know, they, they install laps and then remove the DLL or whatever. But it does look for the DLL um, to see if it's, if it's there. And if so, you know, it will let you know, which is, you know, if it is there, then it's likely that you know, they, they have ran laps on the system or installed laps. Uh, any running processes that are currently uh, running on the system. Um, checking for common security products. So this, this is the part where I was mentioning earlier where I'm looking at the different process names, looking for specific things that I've seen recently. If you have specific process names that you've seen, please send them to me and I'll add them in. Um, if they're not in the tool already, please let me know because I'd love to just have as, as many of these as I can to, uh, to have a more definitive list of process names. Um, domain password policy, uh, which you know you can see here, we've, it's basically your, your typical net accounts uh, command, but it's 
not net accounts. It's uh, it's a different uh, PowerShell based method of getting that. Um, and then the, the DCs for the network and the domain admins group. So you know you can see we get kind of a lot of information, and none of that actually use any net IP config. Who am I? Any of that kind of commands uh, from from the system at all. So that is it for this edition of Tradecraft Security Weekly. Um, you know, for the blue team, you know, host base monitoring and correlation of these various events. Yes, I, I you know I mentioned that you know I'm not running the the typical commands uh, that you might look for for this stuff, but it is still using you know PowerShell and the .NET uh, uh, automation DLLs that are that are built in and some WMI queries as well. And I, I would imagine I haven't actually you know looked at the event logs uh, that something like this would generate, but it, it would be interesting to see. Um, from from blue team perspective, how you would detect just the recon aspect of this. Um, if you want to go grab it and try it out yourself, it's up on GitHub. If you want to learn more about it, uh, I, there's actually a blog post on the BlackHillsInfoSec.com blog. I've included a link there. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I am at Daftech. Have a great day.